transposition, a rule of replacement. If P then Q is logically equivalent to if not Q, then not P. Like all rules of replacement, the statements on either side of the four dots are logically equivalent, have the same truth value, and can be substituted in one for another at any time in a whole or partial line. This rule is based on the same principle as modus tollens. You know that you've got if P then Q. So if you know that if Q is that Q is false, you know that P is false too. The trouble with modus tollens is that you need to know that Q is false. With this rule, you don't. You know that if Q is false, you're going to get not P based on modus tollens. So this rule allows you to just get that conditional. To use this rule, flip the order of the antecedent and consequent, and then add or subtract exactly one negation to both sides. We can use simple inputs, A and B, to see how this works. If A then B is logically equivalent to if not B, then not A. We can use more complicated inputs as well, like A or B, then not C. If A or B, then not C, is logically equivalent to if C, then it's not the case that A or B. Notice first that we've switched the order. A or B goes from antecedent to consequent, while C goes from consequent to antecedent. Notice also that we have added a negation to our P input, A or B, and we've subtracted a negation from our Q input since it came into the the problem negated. We took one away, we added one. If we wanted, we could have added one and gotten not not C. I'm not inclined to think that's necessary. I think this rule works by adding or subtracting. But you could do it that way if you wanted. With transposition, the main operator is always an arrow. It flips the order of the antecedent and consequent and adds or subtracts exactly one negation to both sides. It never works on ampersand, v, or if and only if. As a rule of replacement, it applies in both directions to any whole or partial line. It cites one line and results in one line. I'm going to go ahead and use my same example from modus tollens and modus ponens and say if it is raining, then the ground is wet is logically equivalent to if the ground is not wet, then it is not raining. Notice how the negations follow in both the English and the logic. Of course, they have the same truth table as well. Recall that a conditional is only false when a true antecedent leads to a false consequent. And in line two, that's the case. P is true, but Q is false. So a true P leads to a false Q, but not Q is also true, and a true not Q leads to a false not P. These are just different ways of saying the same thing. Let's take a look at how you might use transposition in an actual proof. If P and Q, and if R then S, line 2, either not Q or not S, therefore either not P or not R. Well, if you see a setup like this, with a conjunction of conditionals, and a disjunction, and then another disjunction as your conclusion, you might want to do a constructive dilemma. If you don't want to, you should. It's the exact setup. But we're going to need transposition to get everything in the right order and get the right negations. So the first thing we're going to do is apply it to line one. Notice we're only applying it to one of the conditionals so far. We've switched the order from if P then Q to if not Q then not P. We've also added negations. Now we'll do the same thing with the other conditional, switching the order and adding negations, resulting in if not S then not R. We've done this in two steps. Remember that each transposition you do is a separate step. We've also not simplified this. We want them connected for our, for our constructive dilemma. In fact, that's the very next thing we'll do. We've got the right order, and we've got the negations, so we've got our conclusion. Not Q, not S, 
match up with that first disjunction, and not P and not R match up with the second. Transposition is an excellent rule for when you need to change the order of things in conditionals or when you need to introduce or remove negations. It can help get you through a lot of otherwise very complex problems. Let's see one of those more complex problems. Premise 1. If either A or B, then it's not the case that C and D. Premise 2. If not A and not B, then E. Therefore, if not E, then either not C or not D. Just looking at this, hopefully we can see a few rules that you might want to use. Perhaps you'll be using De Morgan's to set up for a hypothetical syllogism. Notice that we're just a De Morgan's away from having these two match. And transposition could put E where we want it and negate it as we want it. So we've got some ideas for how to start, but we're actually going to start with a transposition for line 1. So much for that De Morgan's, at least for now. This gives us if C and D, then neither A nor B. We've switched the order, we've subtracted the negation from C and D, and we've added one to A or B. Be very careful when you do this that you always add or subtract exactly one negation, no more and no less. Then we'll use De Morgan's on line 2, resulting in it's not the case that A or B. Then E. Now we've got an antecedent and a consequent that match. So we can do a hypothetical syllogism and skip straight from if C then D, or if C and D to not E. Now transposition will put E in the right spot, matching our conclusion, and it'll give us it's not the case that C and D. So C and D has moved from antecedent, from consequent to antecedent and back. Now that it's back to being an antecedent, it's negated once more. Now we can use De Morgan and match exactly with our conclusion after all. If not E, then either not C or not D. There's really only one common error with transposition, and that's mixing up our negations. And I don't think that's really an error of using the rule wrong, so much as what happens when there's a lot of negations moving around and changing signs all the time. So as with any rule that lets you change from positive to negative, do it carefully. Always add or subtract exactly one negation from both sides of your conditional, and you'll get this rule right.